Hello fellow introverts and welcome back to the channel. I don't have a lot of time so you need to listen closely. I have just caught wind that scientists are now 3D printing functional human brain tissue. So the story goes, a team of scientists at the University of Wisconsin-Madison have claimed to have 3D printed functional brain tissue for the first time. They hope their research could open the doors for the development of treatment for existing neurological disorders, including Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. It was detailed in the new paper published in the journal Cell Stem Cell. The team flipped the usual method of 3D printing on its side, fabricating horizontal layers of the brain cells encased in a soft bio-ink gel. The tissue still has enough structure to hold together, but is soft enough to allow the neurons to grow into each other and start talking to each other. Thanks to this arrangement, each of these neurons, which were grown from pluripotent stem cells, had enough access to oxygen and nutrients from growth media. In experiments, the cells started forming networks, much like the human brain, and could even communicate with each other through neurotransmitters they formed. We printed the cerebral cortex and the stratum, and what we found was quite striking, Dr. Zane explained in the statement. Even when we printed different cells belonging to different parts of the brain, they were still able to talk to each other in a very specific and special way. Zhang says the 3D printed cells have a key advantage over organids, the mini-brain tissue model scientists already use to study the brain. Our lab is very special in that we are able to produce pretty much any type of neurons at any time. Then we can piece them together in almost any time in whatever way we like. We can look very specifically at how the nerve cells talk to each other under certain conditions because we can print exactly what we want. He added, thanks to the flexibility, the team is hoping such systems could be used to study how cells talk to each other. For instance, in tissue affected by Alzheimer's, the tissue could also be used to evaluate new drug candidates. In the past, we have often looked at one thing at a time, which means we often miss critical components. Our brain operates in networks. We want to print the brain tissue this way because cells do not operate by themselves. They talk to each other. Best all, Zhang and his colleagues use a commercially available bioprinter, which could allow other institutes to print their own human brain tissue. The team is now looking for ways to print cells that predefine orientations, which could allow them to get even more control over the types of brain tissue that can be manufactured. This could be a hugely powerful model to help us understand how brain cells and parts of the brains communicate in humans, Zhang said. It could change the way we look at stem cells, biology, neuroscience, and pathogenesis for many neurological and psychiatric disorders. Now that's all well and good if everything is on the up and up, if they actually do believe that they're going to do good and it's not going to be bastardized into some sort of sci-fi horror story. Um, I do firmly believe that we're living in the age of not if we can, but should we. For example, a Switzerland-based startup called Final Spark claims to have built a unique computer processor made up of 16 mini-brains that were made from human brain tissue. And they are positioning this living computer as an alternative to silicon-based computers. And now, other researchers can remotely access the startup's biocomputer, the neural platform, that conducts studies on, say, artificial intelligence, which typically requires enormous resources. One of the biggest advantages of biological computing is that the neurons compute information in much less energy than digital computers. The final spark scientist and strategic advisor wrote in a company blog post earlier this month, it is estimated that living neurons can use over 1 million times less energy than the current digital processors we use. The startup takes brain organids, small samples of human brain tissue derived from neural cell systems, and place them in a specific environment to keep these organids alive. They then hook up these mini-brains to specialized electrodes to perform computing processes and digital analog conversions to transform neural activity into digital information. The concept of living computers has been around for quite some time now. That sounds like some evil scientist shit. Last year, for instance, scientists hooked up neurons to electrical circuits, resulting in a device that could perform voice recognition. These unusual machines 
have some noteworthy advantages over their silicon-based counterparts, including a significantly smaller carbon footprint. This is one of the reasons why using living neurons for computations is such a compelling opportunity. Apart from possible improvements to AI model generalization, we could also reduce greenhouse emissions without sacrificing technological process. Final Spark hopes other institutions will tap into Neural Platform in order to advance biocomputer research, while positioning its tools as the next step in AI computing, as AI companies clamor for resources for data centers, which concerns grow over carbon emissions and water, it's a novel approach that might just pay off in the long run. Now, I don't know how this could possibly go wrong. 3D printing, brain matter, putting it in a computer, because I'm pretty sure isn't that basically what Ultron is? I mean, yes and no, that's a little far-fetched, but are we really that far off? We already have networked AI links, and again, this could be a little conspiratorial, but I don't think, personally, it's probably in the best interest of humanity to start using organic compounds to power inorganic machinery. Just a thought. I've seen a movie or two. Now, the human brain is a complex thing. Like, we know presumably what it does, and we also know people who don't use their brains. It is a thing. But a new study states that neur the neurons of our brain may not exist in a single phase of matter. As, a deta as detailed in a study published by the Journal of Communication Physics, researchers have found signs that these brain structures reach or come close to reaching criticality, wherein the neurons are perpetually phasing between two different states of matter and can be pinned down as exclusively being either one of them. The structure of the brain on the cellular level appears to be a near-phase transition. An everyday example of this would be when ice melts into water, it's still water molecules, but they're undergoing a transition from solid to liquid. What these two states are remains unknown. But the findings illustrate the complexities of our brain's internal mechanisms and provide an avenue for explaining how our mushy, unassuming gray matter can play host to something as intricate as consciousness, while also hinting that human brains may have more in common with brains of less complex creatures than once believed. And a key detail, according to the researchers, is that the brain structure are never fixed on any one state, because if it were on either side of the critical point, it wouldn't be a brain. Seemingly, the brain thrives in a perpetual state of limbo. The structure of neurons are considered to be what known as fractals, which are self-similar, or scale invariant shapes that look the same at any size. Zoom in, fractals, smaller structures, will be virtually identical to the bigger ones, all the way down. When examining publicly available data of 3D reconstructions of human, fruit fly, and mouse brains, the researchers who took a statistical physics approach observed that these repeating fractal patterns in neurons, but they also found the size of the neuron segments varied significantly. This dichotomy of being ordered yet diverse, they concluded that the strong signs of matter approaching a critical point. These are things we see in all critical systems in physics. It seems the brain is in a delicate balance between two phases. What's just as compelling is that when the researchers found that the signs of of criticality in fruit flies and mouse brains too, and not just in human ones, even though they have little else in common. Initially, these structures look quite different, and a whole fly brain is roughly the size of a small human neuron, but then we found emerging properties that are surprisingly similar. This could suggest that criticality is universal in all kinds of brains, but until the researchers are able to apply their analysis to more brain reconstructions, this remains a gray area get it it's a brain joke and at that that's all i have for you nerds today and i will talk to you